that when he cometh and knocketh, uh -huh. they may open unto him immediately. Immediately. Blessed are those servants whom what? Whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Uh huh. Verily I say unto you, uh -huh. that he shall gird himself, gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet, mm -hmm. and, and will what? come forth and serve them. Mm -hmm. and, and if he will come in the second watch, the second watch, and come in the third watch, mm -hmm. and find them so, mm -hmm. blessed are those servants. The people who are ready and waiting on the Lord are going to be the ones that receive the blessing. I was taking note to Black Friday. My family and I was out of town in North Carolina. And it was a long day. Yes, I'm a witness. Thanksgiving was a long day and around about 11, 12 o'clock, I'm ready to turn it in and Brian and Keith said, we going to Walmart. Yes. There's this 50 inch flat screen panel TV, I want it. It's almost like they were saying, it's got my name on it. We got it too, brother. <laughs> the ones who are ready and waiting on the Lord receives the blessing. Yeah. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm thinking back. It was raining that night, wasn't it? Raining, thundering, lightning, <laughs> endurance. But did you move? Stay right there, brother. Did you move, Brother Brian? Did you get what you were looking for? Amen. Church, all you got to do is endure. All you got to do is endure. That's it. Heinz Ketchup made millions off of that slogan. Good things come. Those who wait. Made millions off of that. All right. And if he shall come on the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, so blessed are those servants. And this know that what? That if the good men of if the, the house, good man of the house of the house do what? Had known what hour the thief would come, mm -hmm. he would have watched. He would have watched. And not have suffered his house to be broken through. He wouldn't have suffered it. If he knew it was going to happen, he wouldn't have suffered it. And what did it say? Be ye therefore ready. Do what? Be ye therefore ready. Do what? Be ye therefore ready. Be ye therefore ready. For what? Also, mm -hmm. for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. In an hour. In an hour when you think not. When you know something is about to happen, you brace yourself for it. All right. I can speak because I then had two of my vehicles broken into. Come on now. While I'm asleep, and right outside my window. I mean, literally, I can open up my window and pretty much look down at my car. Hmm. But had I have known that they were going to come on that night, I'd have been waiting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd have been watching. All right. I wouldn't have been watching with no gun or anything like that. <laughs> I'd have had the phone in my hand ready to call 911. All right. Make sure I set that straight. Don't want nobody going from here. <laughs> what that preacher said, he was going to be waiting. Yes. Nah, y'all didn't hear me say that. Be ye therefore ready, church. For the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Colossians, the third chapter. A life well-pleasing. A life well Pleasing. Colossians, third chapter. You brace yourself for things when it's about to happen. All right. I'm here to tell you, church, that God's coming back. You better brace yourself. Amen. Brace yourself because God is coming back. So true. Colossians, the third chapter, first verse. Read those first three verses. What's it say? If ye then be risen with Christ, uh -huh. seek those things which are above, mm -hmm. where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. And what? For ye are dead. For ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Stop worrying about them, getting worked up over the things that are around you. All right. 
It says, set your affection on things above. Brother DJ sings a song. What's it called, Brother DJ? Turn it over to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Huh? He says, turn it over to Jesus, and you can do what? And you can smile the rest of the day. But you got to turn it over to Jesus. You got to seek the kingdom of God. And what's it say? When Christ? When Christ, who is our life, mm -hmm. shall appear, uh -huh. then shall you also appear with him. How many of y'all want to appear with Christ in glory? Amen. Huh? Amen. Well, your life has to be well-pleasing. And what? Mortify? Mortify, therefore, your members, mm -hmm. which are upon the earth. Uh -huh. Fornication. Fornication. Uncleanness. Everybody know what fornication is? Sex outside of the marriage. We're going to make sure we make that. Since that's the first one up there, we're going to make sure everybody knows that. Fornication, mortify means to put it to death. Amen. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication is sex outside of the marriage. Amen. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Uh-huh. Inordinate affection. Uh-huh. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence. What? And covetousness. Coveting, wanting something to belong to somebody else. What? Which is idolatry. Uh-huh. What? For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on who? Cometh on the children of disobedience. The wrath of God comes on people that are doing these things. Amen. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience in the time you also walked some time when you lived in them, but now what? But now you also put off all these. Put off all these what? Anger. Always getting upset. Over nothing. All right. Riding in the car the other day, and Mariah said something to DJ. I don't know what she said. And DJ, Dad, Mariah said, DJ, just let her alone. Well, Mariah said, DJ, if she said it, that's something she's got to give an account for. Don't be mm -hmm. getting worked up over it, getting angry over it. All right. Anger, what? Wrath. Wrath. Malice. Malice. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Filthy communication out of your mouth. You know, it, it, it really hurts, church, to hear and see two and three and four-year-olds cursing. I've All seen right. it. I've heard it. And I've heard people say, oh, that's so cute. There is nothing cute about that. All right. There is nothing cute about that. Amen. Filthy communication. What did it say? Out of your mouth. My wife said the other day, she said, taste your words before you speak it. That's it. Amen. If it tastes filthy, it if it tastes nasty, come on now. Don't say it. But if it tastes good and sweet, you Let can go ahead and speak it. Amen. Taste your words, church, before you speak it. And what's it say? Lie not one to another. Do what? Lie not Lie one not. to another. Lie not one to another. Doing what? Seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Lie not. Lie not. You know, sometimes we don't realize, but it's very easy to lie. A friend of mine said, she said, Sunday, I'll be at church, God willing. Mm -hmm. And I, I commented to her, I said, I like how you added that, God willing. Because when you tell somebody that you're going to do something, what if something comes up? Mm -hmm. Guess what? You just lied to that person. Mm -hmm. All right. That's why when you finish the statement, God willing, yes. All right. Deacon Paul, I'm going to your house to eat some dinner next weekend, God willing. Talk about it. You want to have some food ready for me? <laughs> so add God willing when you say that you're going to do this or you're going to do that make yeah. sure you say God willing so that you don't get caught up because only if it's not God's will you ain't going to be here that's right that's the book thanks be to God that friend is here today Amen. she said God willing and what's it say and have put on the new man and have put on the new man. And what? Excuse me, we gotta go.